All right. Hi, this is Ed. I'm in San Diego and getting adjusted, and you're on Global TV Talk Show again. And our very special guest is a member of the Global Press Club, and you should be a member also. So here is Tatiana St. Germain in uh, the Midwest, U.S. Midwest. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me, Ed. Always a pleasure to be here. You're so kind <laughs> so and so pleasant to be with, frankly. So we're going to talk about great people management, great people leadership, great people development. And that, I've been reading your propaganda, so, <laughs> <laughs> so it's all about assessment and getting the people, well, getting in touch with who these people really are and how they fit. Is it a good fit? Isn't that right? That's right. Um, I always say that we don't build companies. We're supposed to be building people. Hmm. And then people build the companies. But unfortunately, people are unpredictable. They're the most important asset in the business, but the most unpredictable one. And so it's difficult to make those real human decisions and make the right decisions, who to hire, who to promote, who has what it takes to be a great leader. And mistakes happen, promotional mistakes, hiring mistakes, and that leads to some unpleasant results. Um, so what we do is provide pre-hire and post-hire assessments to organizations to give them the information they're missing. That's the biggest disconnect. I think all your listeners would agree that people are the foundation of every business. It's just we need to figure out how to work with people how can we work with and through people and achieve the results that our organizations need to achieve so yeah filling the gap with that information gap that's what assessments uh, help organizations do so the assessment uh, begins uh, before onboarding then first of all there's recruitment mm -hmm. and and those hoops that you they and you have to go through. So th this is really time consuming and full of risk. It is. The hiring process, well, depends on the organization, depending on the industry, can be extremely costly and can be very time consuming. I'm working with a company that is ex that has multiple locations and they're experiencing extremely high turnover. So we just started talking. And by extremely high turnover, I'm talking over 200%. So they are constantly recruiting. They're constantly um, interviewing. And I'm coming in with, with my team and my resources to understand what is not working in this process. Where can we actually save you time, save you money, and reduce turnover and make sure that people stay, the ones that you hire stay, so we're looking at the hiring process. Do you interview well? Assessments provide interview questions. So then hiring managers don't see it as, oh, well, this is something else we need to add to the process. No, it's, it's something else, the piece of information that's going to help you make a better hiring decision and it will help you conduct a better interview, winning interview. And when you walk away from the interview knowing that you made the best possible, most informed decision, um, it doesn't feel like your your hiring process is convoluted or is a flip of a coin. So you, you create some predictability in the process. What percentage of the people that you're working with are female? When I say working with, not the, the company that employs you, but uh, the, the individual that's going through assessment. I know this is an off the wall question. I haven't really <laughs> done the study of, uh, I mean, I've, I've been doing this for 20 years and probably done hundreds of thousands of assessments. So I would assume that with this kind of data, we're uh, close to a bell curve, you know, 68% um, somewhere under the bell curve. It's both men and, and women. I never really thought about it. Um, even in HR or at the executive level, um, the, the individuals that I'm actually working with and st having strategic conversations, I would say they're split evenly, men and women. 
from all walks of life. So I have to assume as a layman, I have to assume that the people who, uh, who are applying for the job or who are being assessed are doing that willingly, and, but they must have some fear. And um, you probably encounter that uh, f frequently and you, you probably uh, have a system or way of um, understanding that there's a fear situation going on and people are reluctant to give you information when they want the job, but, but they are um, probably unnerved by, by some of this. Yeah, and depending on the assessment, I mean, it could be pretty sophisticated. It asks some very pointed questions of a person about them, how how they problem solve, their work ethic. There's a variety of different different types of questions um, that help an organization understand if there is a fit between this person's values and who they are as a person and the job and the organizational values. That's what we're looking for is the match. Um, there's definitely on the candidate side, there's that psychological pressure of going in for, for a position, for a job. Most candidates accept assessments as being part of the process um, as, as a benefit actually, because if they, they, most people want to work on a team and work for a company that cares about their people. So, when there is a rigorous selection process, those individuals will actually appreciate the fact that the company cares who they bring on. And they will go through the assessment um, and they will provide honest answers. And then they can they can ask questions during the interview process and onboarding process. But what what we do, just one of the best practices for implementing assessments, you want to communicate the intent you want to make things very clear for your candidates. You want to also insert the assessment into the hiring process at appropriate moments. Perhaps it's after the phone interview or after the first round of interviews, face-to-face -face interviews, but definitely uh, before the final face-to-face -face interview or Zoom face-to-face -face interview. So that uh, it gives a chance to the hiring manager to ask all those important questions. But yeah, I would say regardless of of some trepidations that candidates might have about the any part of the hiring process, if they really want the job and they care about the team that they're going to potentially be part of, they will be happy to take the assessment. Yeah. So how do people feel about going through this investigation? Um, the assessment itself, yeah. um, again, I, I think sort of what I alluded to in the last, in the last uh, section, in the last response, they, they go through the assessment, they may ask some questions, if something is unclear, but we make it very clear in the communication from the company, that this is part of our process, we care about our team, how long this assessment will take. We explain everything. There's a video that typically plays before the assessment taker goes through it. It's not an investigation. It's really an assessment of who they are. Uh, so it's not positioned as anything invasive. I don't go in and interview them or anything like that. So it's, it's an online evaluation of who they really are and how they think, how they talk, how they problem solve, how they they perform in different uh, situations. So it's very situational, behavioral, what motivates them. These are all the things that are important for all of us to ponder just for the self-awareness sake. And then during onboarding, what organizations do is use this information from the assessment to help in the onboarding process. They have much deeper conversations with the newly hired individual to help them understand themselves better, better than they even know themselves. So what a powerful thing to do for a company is to show, yes, we care who we bring on, we bring being selective and discerning. So now you're part of the team, welcome. And let us talk about what we really value about you, what you really bring to the table, what are your strengths? 
and um, it's it's a powerful experience. This is really interesting. I didn't even imagine that it would be done online, like what a Zoom talk show. <laughs> uh, that plus what a Q and A uh, written. It's completely online. Questions that they answer online um, by themselves in the comfort of their own home. Um, there's rarely do we implement the old fashioned paper and pencil questionnaires, but it happens sometimes, not as much as it, as it was happening 20 years ago. Now we're much more connected, technology is advanced, so it's very convenient. And is a video uh, talk show environment uh, part of that interview assessment. assessment? No. Isn't that interesting? I, I was just sitting here imagining that this is what you probably do all day. But no, it's not that at all. No, no. It's, uh, so face-to-face -face or Zoom, it's going to be part of the interview process. And the interviewer is going to use the results of the assessment, of the online assessment. Well, audience, there you know. This is not scripted and not rehearsed, and this is just <laughs> on a stuck. And I'm actually feeling very comfortable with you uh, sharing all this information to me and therefore to the audience out there. Uh, and I'm, I'm feeling a lot more comfortable about the uh, assessment because I use the word investigation not to be weird or accusatory at all, but that's what I thought it was. But mm -hmm. it's not. It's, it's just an understanding of the confidence. Of, you know, you, you could probably tell how some questions are responded to and... Mm -hmm. um, but then again, I was assuming that you did a face-to-face -face, uh, on, it could be on a Zoom, uh, it didn't have to be in person. Yeah, these are, this is all new. <laughs> yeah, this is a very good point you're making. Um, me being in the business, I kind of get used to the fact that everyone should know what an assessment is, right? So um, assessment, and that's the reason we use the word assessment. You cannot fail who you are. What we're trying to understand by implementing this uh, it's not a test. You can't fail who you are because test implies that there is pass or fail, right? Yeah, right. Here we're assessing who you are using a very sophisticated, highly validated process where personal biases are not included. It's not part of it. There's plenty of unconscious bias going on during the interview because that's when those personal perceptions can get, get in the way and initial reactions to the candidate but the results of the assessment keep those in check because the assessment was done online. It's, it's again, it's validated specifically for pre-employment. And we, we're just after understanding what is your DNA? What, what are your uh, preferences, who you are as a person? And then we're going to take that information and match it to the jobs that we have open. And then we will have a conversation about it. Here are the gaps. Here's what you're good at. Here are your strengths and challenges. And we would like to put you in this role. And if we were, let's talk about some of these things. So let's discuss. That's where the hiring manager can ask questions. There is also coaching reports that come with it. So you see what I'm saying? It's you, you start to, you get to know a person so much better, so much deeper. It's, such, it's at a much deeper level even before you bring them on board. That way you're not waiting six months to two years to get to know them through day-to-day -day interactions because you already know, and they know that you know. And if a company implemented all of our best practices, everybody on the team knows because during onboarding, you want to get everyone incorporated into the team as fast as possible. And the best way to do it is to use an assessment and talk about each, how we how can we complement each other because you have your strengths i have my strengths just because we're different doesn't mean that we're difficult yeah we might annoy each other once in a while with our quirks of personality but let's go ahead and talk about them because it's important for everyone on our team to know that it's not personal it's just who you are and that's what you bring to the table we can use your talents 
You know what? This has really clarified the whole situation for me, and I hope for the audience out there. And uh, I thank you for, for being um, so easy to dialogue with in this regard um, and for answering my questions and setting me straight. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and that's fine. I'm happy to do that and participate. Okay, so let's bring this to a close now. And I thank you very much for your time. Uh, once again, tell our audience uh, how to reach you. Um, I am on LinkedIn, and I believe I am the only Tatiana St. Germain on LinkedIn. You can uh, connect with me. Please message me. And feel free to visit our website, greatpeoplemanagement.com, greatpeoplemanagement.com. And if I, if I could just take a second, we, we have an exciting yes. opportunity. Perhaps some folks in your audience might be interested in it. We are conducting a free job studies with the intent to benchmark what successful people do in key positions across industries, different companies, different geographies. So if you have um, about over 100 employees in your company and you have that one critical position, maybe it's sales or engineering or it's highly skilled or nursing or one of those really difficult to fill or difficult to keep people in positions, and you're trying to understand well, what makes our top performing people who stay so different? Help me understand those. Please reach out to me. We will be able to do a job study of that uh, title, that role, and help you understand how successful people do it, how, do, how they perform. And you can take that information then forward to into your hiring process. And the way it benefits me is that I build a database of real, current, up-to-date uh, performance models for key positions, because I really believe what success looks like changed in the last three years and since COVID. So I'm looking for these, these partnerships. I think it, it's a good win-win. So free job studies, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Thank you for sharing that. And I uh, want to encourage you out there in the audience to jump on this. And uh, because I've learned so much in the last 20 minutes here, and I think that you um, in a company role will learn a great deal, just like I did, about how Tatiana does this and the special uh, uh, verve and personality, as you could see right here on the screen, that uh, could help you and your business out there. Uh, so let's continue this next time. Sounds good. Thank you for having me. And thanks for being a member of Global Press Club. We'll talk about that again. Sounds good. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye.